All right, well, I will do the quick intro of the last talk before the awards. It's you ladies standing between the awards and the end of the summit. So thank you for doing the final talk. Um, I'm happy to introduce Jess Hyde, Nicole Odom, and Sarah Hayes to do a talk on the Facebook mini portal. Thank the three of you for all that you do across the board. All your work is amazing. And I'm honored to introduce you. Thanks, Heather. Hi, my name is Jessica Hyde. Um, I work at Hexordia, GMU. I consult for Magnet Forensics. I'm joined by my friends and co-researchers, Nicole. I'm Nicole Odom. I'm a forensic scientist in the digital multimedia evidence section of the Virginia Department of Forensic Science, and I'm excited to be here. I'm Sarah. I'm a forensic research intern at Hexordia and a student at Cham Champlain College. And, you know, I, what I love is getting to work with Sarah on this as well, as she's new to the field, is a career transitioner from another field. And what is so exciting about this is when we get to all collaborate, because if you want to know whose idea this research was, it was Sarah's. And she's been working, you know, in DFIR just for a couple of months and working on her degree. And with that, let's kick it off. So the Facebook portal mini was selected um, for research as it's a new IOT that was advertised for ease of use for communicating with both friends and family. Um, having heard about it from a coworker who was using it for an elderly parent, um, it was curiosity about the vulnerabilities with the device, especially with the voice activation assistance, such, such as the Hey portal um, and the Amazon Alexa. Some of the other features that drew me to testing the device were the options of the photo sharing, the story time, and how this information was stored locally um, and on the end to end. Um, we tested three different portals, um, two white portal minis and one black portal mini. One of the white portal minis was actually used for the teardown. Um, we also used the iOS, um, an iOS device, an Android device um, for the portal apps as well as the applications. The different potential sources of data um, we have are the portals, um, the iOS device, the Android device, and the data in the clouds. The application we have um, from sourcing are is Facebook, the Facebook portals, um, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Alexa. So that really brings us to the hardware. And you know, it wouldn't be me if I didn't have a sample to show you. So here is a portal. And one of the first things that you'll note when you have a portal is that this power plug is unique. Uh, this isn't very typical. This is what they call a smart plug. And looking at it, it looks almost like a TRS, a tip ring sleeve or a TRRS, something that you would see more likely with an audio connection. Not what it is, kind of cool, but it means that it's not going to be our point of connection. Next slide. So when we start to take apart the portal, and I'll show you actually on this one, it's pretty easy. You can pop off the speaker cover and there is a USB-C uh, port, which you can see in the picture right near where that pop-off point is. Now, this is really, really interesting because of course that's like, hey, this is someplace where portal wants access. There are people who will use that to connect to HDMI and broadcast a portal um, on a larger screen, especially if this is being used in like a workplace as a conference system. Um, however, what I wanted to do there was go ahead and ADB to it. So going into the settings menu, uh, this is running Android and looking to go do the developer options pop on seven times. No, you cannot do that. Tapping on that seven times is not going to enable debugging mode. There's a skin on it. Um, so finding some unique ways to get through the skin, um, you can uh, with a keyboard emulation. Um, and then you can get to the real Android settings but the developer mode is still grayed out. So that's out. So then tried looking at, um, and you know, with some suggestions, we had a fantastic mentor for this project, by the way. We were honored to have Terrence Williams, um, who teaches, he's a SAMS instructor, and he will be teaching the cloud course um, coming up, but he actually works for Facebook. And he was like, hey, have you, you tried to get into the device um, any other ways? So we tried going ahead and getting into Fastboot. You can get this into Fastboot um, by pressing down and plugging it in. There's no power button. So you actually have to unplug either the cable or the stick, either way, uh, and that'll get you into the device. However, I still need to do some more work about 
crossing that threshold in terms of getting the data off that way. Now, so the next step, if I can't get through the connector for me and anybody who's seen me talk about IoT before uh, in many of the presentations I've done with Brian Moran, either at Prior Spans D for Summit, some things like the Alexa or things like the Peloton, the next thing for me to normally do is to tear this down. So a couple of things. This device is not meant to be torn down. It is molded solid plastic around the frame. The plastic is melted to the shield. Um, there are no screws or anything until you get that off. And which direction do the screws come from? Under the screen side. So what did I do? I put on my safety glasses and grabbed my Dremel and I dug this piece apart. Whew. There's a reason there are no public teardowns. Um, my basement was covered in plastic. I made my kids leave the house because even though I had a fume hood on, I was afraid of all of the evil things I was putting into the universe. Maybe that's why I have this cold. Maybe my lungs took in too much stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I have not yet gotten data off this chip. So is that part of my plan? Yes. Do I think that that is going to be an achievable solution for people to do on evidence? Absolutely not. It, when I say destructive, I have never seen a device that I had to get so destructive with in terms of destruction. Um, so with that, we had to look at those other areas in terms of getting evidence. Next slide. So another area that we looked at, we tried to uh, pair with Bluetooth. And the portal is discoverable by its device name, the user sets. Uh, we tried this with the Fed Touch 2, and it was able to pair. However, that's as far as we got. So you're not able to get an extraction um, through Bluetooth, at least not yet. Um, so not as far as we were able to see. So we did test that, uh, but no dice. But you can Bluetooth a keyboard to it. That's, that's how you get to the other menu. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and dive into the data itself. So first I'll start with the uh, paired iPhone device. So on this, we got an iOS full file system extraction. So I'll jump into the Portal Companion app first. So this app allows you to interact directly with your Portal Mini from your iPhone. You can uh, manage your contacts, send photos directly from your iPhone to your Portal Mini device, and you can also call the Portal Mini uh, from your iPhone device if you're in another room or you're away from home. So it's a really, really cool app. It has a lot of information, but this is the GUID that was identified for it in the iPhone full file system extraction. So I'll go ahead and dive into some of the important folders. So this compressed image folder actually contained all of the images that I sent from the iPhone device to the Portal Mini device. As you can see on the left, my data population, I sent the Dream Jeep album uh, to the Portal Mini and all of those images were able to be found. Uh, there was also a sync local storage folder. It had a few files in it, but this one was of particular interest. So it had a lot of Portal Mini device information, which uh, could be used for warrants or you know various other purposes in your investigation uh, but there's an aloha id which is the identifier that facebook assigns your portal mini similar to um, the ids it assigns to different users the device serial numbers in here the device name um, the type of device the last time it loaded information about your users there's just a lot of great information in this file Then there's the snapshots folder. So the snapshots folder is present for any application that's downloaded really. Um, but under this, we were able to find the package name for the portal companion app, that's com.facebook.bishop. And then depending on how you use your iPhone and what you're seeing on your screen, you'll have different snapshots in there that were recorded, the equivalent to the recent screen on the Android device. And as you can see here, in one of these screenshots, I had um, my home Shreff device being um, identified. Couple other folders of interest. There was the store kit, which held a receipt that contained the date of application download. Um, every application again has this as well, but what's interesting about this is it gives you kind of a time frame to jump off for, um, for looking at the data. And also might be around the time that that individual actually got the portal mini device. Um, typically people download this companion app whenever they first get their device. And then a document being saved by the portal was really interesting. So there's only one file in here and all it contains is a yes or no, is this Facebook user an employee? So that's really interesting because tracking whether this user is a Facebook employee or not, maybe they have less security measures, um, maybe they have an open workspace on that device that you can go and investigate. 
So that's really interesting. We definitely want to dive in that into future research. And then stepping back from the companion portal app, there are other artifacts on the iPhone that were able to be identified for the portal. So this Facebook login for devices, it's for IoT devices like a smart TV or your portal mini device. And what happens is whenever you try to use an application on your IoT device, I tried to use Amazon here and it gave me this code, which I then had to register on another device in order to be able to use that application. But once I registered it and was able to log in, under the Safari history.db, you're able to find some Facebook for devices events and then also some log into portal events. So these are really, really great artifacts because they allow you to link other actions to the portal mini. You'll see throughout a presentation, we identified a lot of artifacts, but we can't necessarily in the data see that they were performed on the portal mini device. But by putting everything into like a timeline view and looking at the time frame surrounding those activities, you're able to pair different actions and kind of infer that this activity might have occurred on an IoT device. And again, snapshots, like I mentioned, there's many portal mini Easter eggs kind of throughout there for every different application you have. So for Facebook here, you can see that I shared media to different contacts from the portal. And then for WhatsApp, there's a, a portal image here. And that indicates that this user in particular actually linked their WhatsApp contacts to their portal mini device so that they can call those contacts from the portal mini. And that brings us to looking at the Android device. Now, what's so interesting is that the Android device handles these artifacts completely different than they were on iOS. On iOS, the main data was stored in the portal application, the one that is bishop, com.facebook.bishop. That is not the case with the Android. Next slide, please. So there are four package names that we're actually going to find on this device, and these are going to seem familiar to you. The Facebook app, com Facebook Katana, the messenger app, com.facebook.orca, com.whatsapp, which is WhatsApp, and com.instagram.android. But notably missing is, next slide, the Facebook Bishop app. Now, the portal app was definitively downloaded and installed on this application. Were there any data folders pertaining to the com.facebookbishop on the associated Android device? No. We actually went back and carefully checked our notes to ensure, speaking of that documentation and note taking that was spoken about yesterday in the validation presentation and earlier today in the reporting, we checked and validated and then we found proof that we had actually downloaded and installed it, but we actually doubted it because we weren't finding data. Next slide. Now we did have a full file system image, not a full binary image. Uh, did this image with uh, an M sub XRY is what was used on this one. Um, and here you can see that we start to get things like Facebook messages. Now, one of the cool things is the data was stored just as it would be for normal Facebook Messenger, which means an open source tool like Aleep actually parsed this out the window default. Next slide. Likewise, WhatsApp data could be correlated between the message store.db and the wa.db. So you can correlate the content together to get the WhatsApp messages between the contacts and the user ID, just basic SQLite databases. But what's important is this is where the message data was, and it was not in the portal app. On the iOS device, we had a full file system image. The data was in the portal app and not in the independent Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp apps. What's really also problematic here is we found no data that states that this are originated on the portal as opposed to on the phone. Next slide, please. So here's the WhatsApp signal report. It just ran through um, Aleep as well. So those calls are logged in Aleep. Next slide. So then what I wanted to do, um, again, other data, Facebook threads, you can find those. So the next thing I want to do, next slide please, was dig into some of the URLs that are created for where pictures are stored. Now we're starting to go, can we go from what's on the device to the cloud, or at least use those URLs to figure out more information. So I reached out to one of my favorite tools by Ryan Benson, which he presented last year at the San for Summit, or maybe two years ago, called Unfurl. Next slide. And in this tool, you can really get a breakdown of what each little item in that URL means. Next slide. And here you can see it closer, where we can start to get the size, the dimensions, the name of the JPEG, where it is located. Next slide. 
But if you don't want to dig into that, you can actually find this in the raw hex in the DB. So if you start digging in here, right before you see the URL, you can actually see the breakdowns of each item um, in the XML context of what it's going to be, of uh, key value pair, not necessarily XML, key value pair here of um, the fact that this is the image, this is the size, et cetera. So you can actually just refer to this in the hex to learn more information about what the image is, even if you're unable to recover it from the application. Next slide. And that brings us to self-archives. Yeah, so now I'll dive into the self-archives. That's when the user actually logs into the application themselves, downloads, downloads their own data, and then is able to get that in an archive. So the Facebook actually had many Portal Mini artifacts, which makes sense. The Portal Mini is a Facebook product. Then the Instagram had a little less, and WhatsApp wasn't really useful here. So the Facebook self-archive had a lot of folders with many JSON files. I'll kind of dive into those individually. So the account center JSON file actually lists any accounts that that user has linked to their Facebook. So this individual, Jared Schreffler, had linked his Instagram account. And that information was here. So that could be useful in indicating that his Instagram data might have been present on the Portal Mini, which it was. Then the recently viewed JSON file that records any videos that are, are watched through your Facebook um, or through an IoT device that has your Facebook on it. So I viewed the video on the left through the, the Portal Mini device. And first, before I was able to view it, I had to log in on the right. Um, that Facebook for Devices event was created for the Portal Facebook Watch app. So then I was able to document that time, go into this recently viewed JSON file and see that the video was viewed shortly after. And that allowed me to link it with the Portal Mini. So I have all this metadata um, about the video, but not necessarily that it was performed on the Portal Mini, but that allowed me to do so. Then there's this you're off Facebook activity JSON. That's particularly interesting because for the Portal Mini, there's no specific browsing history in any of these uh, extractions that we did. However, the off Facebook activities actually records um, every site you visit and the time that you visit it on the Portal Mini device. So you see I visited Amazon here, that's recorded there. And then for some of them, there's a more descriptive um, type of activity that the user performed. For the Amazon, not so much but that's a nice way to keep track of what the user was doing. And then there's also the apps and websites JSON file. So that records any applications that were installed on your IoT device or the Portal Mini that the user had to log into Facebook in order to interact with. So on this slide, for instance, I wanted to listen to Spotify on the Portal Mini. So it recorded me logging into Spotify and the date and time that I did so. So that's another way to track user interaction. And the Portal has assistance. So it has both Hey Portal commands as well as Alexa commands. Um, however, it's interesting to note that only the Hey Portal commands, the audio files are being recorded. We were actually unable to find any Alexa data in the extractions that we performed. Um, so those Alexa commands weren't able to be identified across the board. And you guys know I love my Alexa data. Um, so I, I want to be clear here that we did not go after any Amazon data sources. We kept our analysis to Facebook and Facebook owned data sources. Right. So really, we expected to find these state portal commands and we did. Um, we also tried to record uh, data with the uh, portal mini mic turned off uh, just to make sure it wasn't recording us and storing that data and it wasn't. So that's good on them. And this one is particularly interesting. So we did a couple of different extractions over time. Our first extraction, the self-archive, had this information in it. The most recent one did not. So it's no longer being given back as part of the self-archive, And but it's important to talk about because it was there at some point. So it's obviously being recorded. Um, this room's joined JSON file. Uh, you're able to communicate with individuals through the Portal Mini that you're not even friends with. So my individual, Annie, wasn't friends with Elizabeth, uh, which is Sarah. However, I invited her to my room. At one point, she invited me to her room as well, and that's stored on my Portal Mini under Rooms. And the metadata for these calls is completely recorded in the Rooms Join JSON file. So the time is recorded, participants, et cetera. Nicole, I'm just going to mention, um, whereas I said before that there were no indications in the data uh, on the Android device that uh, it was created on the Facebook, the exception would be in the instance that someone joined a room that room was listed and actually Annie's room if you uh, were to look at that data the actual hand 
uh, the icon that was used for Annie's room actually appears in that database. And Alexis Brignoni, you'll be happy to know that that was successfully parsed by your tool as well without any changes. Yeah, so it's, it's great to note the differences between iOS and Android because there were so many that we came across. And then of course, many portal mini Easter eggs throughout Facebook makes sense, it's their product. So um, sharing to the portal through messages, those media files, asking someone to join a room, all of that was there. Uh, the Facebook portal mini allows you to create notes. There are four different types. The photo and video notes were stored off of the portal. So we found those in our extractions um, due to size. However, the other two types, the text and the drawings, we weren't able to find those. So um, those are probably stored locally, and that makes sense. And then for any video files that you saw on your Portal Mini device, you have the metadata for that. So the path for that, the upload IP address for that, the date and time that it was uploaded, all of that information is there for you. A couple of JSON files that are specific to the portal. So the Your Portals JSON file has the device name that's given by the user, any of the albums that they toggled to display on their portal, as well as the linked account types. So this individual only had one linked account, their Facebook account. However, another individual that we populated had two linked accounts and it listed both of those there. And then the Hey Portal commands in the Your Portal voice interactions JSON file, all of those are transcribed and recorded. And it also transcribes when audio is not intended for the portal. Um, and you would think that it wouldn't record and store those. However, we were able to get all of those audio unintended files as well. So lots of great unintentional data there. That could be very useful in a case if a portal is in the space. Absolutely. Uh, again, lots of metadata throughout these JSON files. So all of your metadata for your shared albums, including the IP address and the time that those were um, toggled as sharing. All of the and media that's files. Real, that's your real IP address, not masked. That is yeah. why it is not in the deck. <laughs> yes, we found that out the fun way. <laughs> and then all of the media files are there as well. So all of the photos that you're just, you're displaying on your portal through your Facebook, through the portal app, um, the notes, and then through the companion app as well that you sent from the iPhone to the portal mini. Of course, Facebook is recording all of your posts. Um, and those are there with their metadata as well. However, there's no indication whether any of those actually occurred on the portal mini. But again, with the off Facebook activity, I was able to see that I went on the portal mini and went to ESPN.com. I shared this article and then shortly after in the timeline view, you could see that this um, article was posted on my Facebook. And so you're able to kind of track those different activities um, by looking at the broader scope within your investigation. And it's important to note that if the user does delete these um, posts, those are not persistent through extraction. So we did test that as well. And even though it's coming from the portal mini, you're not able to get those new. The one interesting thing about Instagram is that Instagram records every login and that's even when you're accessing your data through the portal mini. Um, so as you can see here, uh, this login has the portal mini spe specifications. So it has, it's running Linux, Android 9, uh, you have your uh, portal mini build there, the IP address that you're logging in from, all of that great information that you can utilize. So done with the self archives, moving into cloud. Uh, again, lots of Facebook, but this time WhatsApp comes to the table. So Facebook, again, lots of Easter eggs, makes sense, it's their product, it's everywhere. Same as with the self archives. However, with WhatsApp, there is this confirmation code that the user received when they first linked their WhatsApp contacts with the Portal Mini device. And that was able to be acquired through the cloud only. So this shows that this user has um, accessed their WhatsApp contacts through the Portal Mini device. So I decided to jump through the Google Takeout because normally anytime I do anything on Android, Google Takeouts are full of data. Well, apparently not when it's the Facebook verse. That only applies when it's the Google verse. So all the stuff I'm used to getting on the takeout when I'm using uh, a Google Home uh, system obviously are not going to apply. Uh, I only found one piece of information, but at least it confirmed that you know you need to look 
at the portal. And that's just that there's a portal of Facebook when that was installed. And that's actually the installation of that Bishop app is what you're seeing here, as well as the device that's associated. So if you do have a Google takeout on the account, you're going to know that you have a portal and which device is associated. There was some data that we unfortunately didn't find that we were hoping to. So on this slide, it has all of the local data, um, the notes that I mentioned, the text and the drawing, any alarms, reminders, uh, to-do lists, things like that, um, and the specific browsing history. So although in those off Facebook activity, you're able to see the sites and the times that they visited them, you can't see anything specific that they did throughout the history. And then a couple of other things that perhaps are maybe stored locally, not sure. Um, something that's really interesting with the iOS side is that any calls that are performed on the Portal Mini device to a WhatsApp link contact are unable to be identified. So those were found and documented pretty thoroughly on the Android device, but for iPhone, looking at all those different extractions, um, any calls from the Portal Mini to a WhatsApp contact. If they were only a WhatsApp contact and not a Facebook contact as well, it, it's not in there. So that's very, very interesting. And then any activities performed during calls on the Portal Mini itself, so you could play games with people, read books, um, none of that is able to be identified. And then calls performed in the Portal Mini, um, the Portal Companion app. So performing a call from the Companion app on the iPhone to the Portal Mini, um, those aren't found anywhere as well. So you would expect those to be found in the Companion app's data, um, but they're not there. And please check out my GitHub for the full PDF of the presentation. I'm working on the scripts for the cloud in Android and the iOS content. I'm planning on writing the um, uh, for iLeap and the ALeap modules for the Android and the iOS for the scripting. So check that out, bookmark it. Um, that should be coming soon. So with that, we want to talk a little bit more about our further research. So we still want to figure out how to get into that USB uh, ADB. We're going to get the data off that chip. Uh, we do know that the Facebook portal uh, larger version that the chip that's on that happens to be an IoT SOC, uh, which means the EMMC is built in. If you guys don't understand what that means, that means that we're not going to be able to ISP to the EMMC to get the data. Um, this chip has no data sheets and most likely is going to need uh, some decapsulation to get in. So some advanced methods, but we're definitely going to pursue that. And uh, we definitely want to take a look at something that just got released since we had concluded our research, which is third party use at your own workplace, because the Facebook portal, instead of just being something for you to communicate with grandma with, is now being used for inner office conferencing, especially in the remote uh, workforce. So that invention is going to bring some new possibilities to what may be available. So we want to dig into that. And just a reminder, safety first, always wear your safety glasses. I probably would have lost an eye or a finger if I wasn't doing things safely. And with that, we'd like to open the floor for questions. I did see one that came through uh, just in the Q&A feature here, though, if I could ask it to Nicole and Sarah, was just, um, how do you get an archive? Oh yeah, um, so you can log into your Facebook or whatever application that you're wanting to get your archive from. In the settings, you just go to my data and you can actually request your data from whatever service or site you're going to. It's actually really easy. There are a bunch of walkthroughs online because at first I didn't know you could do that either. And you can get your entire history. You can get a week's worth. It's insane how much data you can get in a self archive. So there are, since we have a few minutes, there are a few questions and I tried to pin them to your channel to make it easy. But I think one of them was, what did you use for, what was it timelining in your presentation? Let me see what I pinned. Yeah, the, the tools that we loaded it into for analysis. So um, we used uh, what, Celebrite and a physical analyzer as well as Axiom. So their timeline and used, right? Yeah, so and we're easy to use. Um, you could also just, um, pull the timestamps themselves because literally every single artifact um, that I walked through had all of the timestamp information, uh, decode that. Um, decode's a great uh, tool to use to change your timestamps. And uh, yeah, you can easily track that. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm a big CyberChef fan, so I just translate things in CyberChef. We all just have our own little tools we were using. We were using everything under the sun that we had access to, so. Fantastic. <laughs> 